All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back on day two slash part two of this 67 D100. Today we're going to be changing uh, two things. Yesterday I got the uh, carburetor done. We'll, I'll show you that in a minute. It started to rain, so I packed up, moved everything inside, and I didn't want to be doing a video in there with parents and the TV going. So I finished that up, and I'll show you in a minute. But we're going to be doing the coil and the points on this distributor and uh, hopefully getting some spark going. So we're going to have the fuel taken care of. We're going to get the spark taken care of. Then we're going to try to run it. Uh, not long because I need a radiator and hoses and stuff. I just want to make sure that this thing's going to be eligible to keep working on. So let's get this uh, let's get this stuff put back together and get the ball moving today. And hopefully in the next few days we'll be driving around down the road somewhere. All right, so I got my workbench set up here. But anyways... Let me take this bag off the carburetor. I cleaned it up yesterday, I put it on. I didn't put all this uh, linkages and stuff on. I still gotta put the spring on, this linkage for the choke, which goes up here, and this greatly engineered piece of not what it's supposed to be. Uh, anyways, here's the carburetor once I got it all put back together, put back on there. Um, here's the old coil that I'm gonna take off and test, show you guys the differences between this old coil and the new one. And then I'm gonna show you guys the points underneath the distributor cap here. And uh, I'm gonna try to set it and everything my way, I guess. My first time I'm gonna be doing the point system. I normally don't mess with them. They're older than my generation, but we're gonna get this thing uh, put back together soon. So let me, uh, let me grab this off of here and Get the new coil set it up on the workbench with the multimeter and everything and show you guys how to test it and we'll just get the ball rolling all right so just if you guys are curious this is the part number for that black coil in the back i got this uh from autozone it's a car quest type now it doesn't have anything on it to identify it besides this number here on the bottom um but i'm gonna go and test these there's primary and secondary winding we'll get into that in just a second Here's the old coil with the mounting bracket still on it. Um, we're going to get into testing this. This is an Excel 8140 or whatever, 12 volt. Doesn't matter. We're just going to show you how to test it and see where old and new is going to be. And yeah, we'll get there. All right. Now for testing this, you're going to want to put this over here on your little ohm thingy or whatever. It's a little horseshoe with the fucking feet on it. It's what it is. Um, now, they say that you're supposed to test the primary winding, which are these two here, uh, with less than 200 ohms, I think is what it is. Anyways, you come over here, you put your little test tube on there and whatnot. It'll tell you 1.5. Well, come on, give it to me. What is it? One point what? One point... One point six. Sure. Now, you'll test these two and see how far out you are. So, one point one out. Normally, these are supposed to be zero flat, right? So, you're just going to take that number, one point... Or I'm sorry, zero point one... And you're going to subtract that off of this number that you're going to get. So 1.6, subtract the 0.1, it's 1.5. Um, I think that's supposed to be good. Normally, this is supposed to be 1.5 or so. And for the secondary winding, it should be 10 to 15, I think, for these coils. And I think this one was pretty low, 7.17. Uh, we're going to compare this to the new coil here. So remember... Primary winding, secondary winding. Alright, so the new coil that I picked up yesterday from Advanced is going to be primary winding of 1.6, same as the last one, so that should be fine, and 8.52. So it still seems a bit off, but you have to look up the specifications for the coil. Um, Every coil is going to be slightly different for their specs. This one, without a doubt, I know should be good. So, um, 
we're gonna get this thrown on there and then we're gonna do the points on the distributor now I'm not gonna take the I'm not gonna take the distributor off but we're gonna do that so we'll throw this new coil on here quick and then uh get this points changed out which I'll show you the part number here this is a part number from advanced all right and this point system goes inside underneath that distributor cap I'll show you that too in a minute all right I put the coil back on now uh, I pre popped this cap because it's hard to do with uh, just one hand but what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to take that off and there's a little rotor bug deal on top and you just pull it right off there's a tab in there that sits right in there okay worry about that later anyways here's the points back here in the back now I replaced this wire earlier but I said well if I'm gonna replace the coil I might as well just replace the points so what I'm gonna do is there's a uh, screw back here right in there I'm gonna take that screw out points will pop off and then you can undo that wire to the points to this uh, whatever the hell it's called I can't remember anyways I'm gonna replace the points and then uh put everything back together and we'll see if we'll have some spark and then we'll pour some fuel down in the carburetor from that fuel jug right back there and see what happens anyways uh let me get this uh points off here and i'll explain to you what it does and uh how it works i guess i can do it right now um the way this works is there's a spring right here and there's a contact point right there right on the right side of my index finger anyways every time this turns with the crank um, it'll open up and every time that those points separate it'll create an arc and that arc is sent through the top of this right to the distributor cap but it turns so every time that it arcs it sends arc to each wire while it's turning like this so we're just gonna fix that real quick and hopefully it'll send power to all these little thingies and blow up in a good way we're, we're hoping for combustion gases not explosions anyways i'll get back to you when it's done i got the points out now the points sets in here just like that right and here's that little contact piece i was telling you about in the spring that allows it to open up see how dirty and corroded that is right there most of the time you can sand these, but they're just $8 to replace. Now, these little wire connectors here, all they do is sit in underneath these two little nuts right there. And they'll compress down on each other to get contact. So, we're going to take you over here to the bench. So, here's the old one. Here's the new box. And like I said, this is the part number from Advanced. get this out of here now this is what it comes with just the points alone right here's these new connectors look at the difference here let's see if we can get the focus here see the difference the springs a lot harder there's not any corrosion all right and it comes with this grease that looks like a fancy little pill don't eat it poison anyways I think this uh, grease goes around where the contacts made because uh, every like every time this thing spins around you don't want it to get hot if it gets hot it's just not going to operate right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this little capsule open put some on the finger and I'm going to run it around the distributor uh, the little dilly do bad in there I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, I'm going to get this stuff replaced real quick It's it shouldn't take that long a lot of people say you can use a, a business card or what I'm actually thinking about using is this. It's the same thickness, really, but you're supposed to use feeler gauges. I don't have none of them things, but all you're doing is getting this nice little gap in between. You set it at the highest point, just to where you get the thickness that you desire. Right about in there, I think. I think it's point five. I don't know. Don't get me lying to you. I'm just going to do it the way that I know works, and get it done all right back up here to this little uh distributor piece where this sets you can see this little let me move this wire out of the way you can see that little 
hexagon thing. I don't know. School is hard. That thing right there where it rotates. Um, and you can see where it was setting. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting this grease and running a very thin layer around where it's going to be rubbing. And then right underneath where it's setting so it doesn't get hot. And uh, then I'm going to set the new one down and use the card or whatever. You got to get it in there just right. Feel right where it's getting tension. But you can still slide it through. And then you should be about right. So. All right, to the best of my ability, I just showed you what the point system does. Now, you saw that it was firing every time it was opening, uh, but we have another problem now. <clears throat> it's firing at the points, but it's not getting fire to the plug. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these contact points up uh, one more time on this distributor cap. All these little points, they get corroded sometimes. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and... Uh, See if that'll help. Maybe it's the plug wires. I'm not really sure. Uh, we can test the plug wires, make sure they got continuity or whatever, I guess. Some of these plug wires are a bit weird to test. You can check, like, check ohms, and if they give you an overload or they're not you know, consistent, then there's something wrong with them. But we'll see which way we can do. Um, now, I poured gas in here earlier, and it's still leaking pretty good around here where this actuates. And here where this continues to actuate but on the other side you can see it moving and then also for some reason it's leaking out of this I'm maybe it's a fuel hose so there's an inlet and then a return maybe that's the return hose but they had this hooked up here which doesn't make any sense why would you send fuel to the valve cover that just doesn't I don't know that makes no sense to me but I showed you to the best of my ability what the points can do. Now I'm going to have to figure out why there's no spark again and then see what I can do about fixing those fuel leaks. Maybe I missed, uh, missed some um, O-rings or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, like I said, it didn't come with, or maybe I didn't tell you, it didn't come with its own little instruction manual like most carburetor kits do. So I was doing everything on there on the fly. I have no idea what any of... Uh, the parts were called where they went um but i rebuilt it i might have missed this shaft maybe that shaft comes out and there's something in there that holds fuel and maybe um i'll take it apart in a few and then see what's going on all right i got this thing put back together i cleaned up the little rotor bug it was kind of dirty i cleaned up the points um i'm sorry not the points but the contact points on the top of the distributor cap didn't really test the wires too much. We'll get back into that, but I'm going to, I put a little bit of fuel in it. I know it's leaking, but it's still going to get in there the way it needs to. So what I'm going to do is turn it over and see if I can get uh, any sort of fire off. And then if that's the case, then I can worry about the fuel and I have to worry about the spark anymore. So I'm going to put you up here. Bear with me for just a second. Turn this thing down. I'll put you right here, let you see what's going on. And hopefully this thing will fire off in just a second. All right, that's perfect. Okay, so we got this thing to fire off. Awesome. Um, I got to figure out with a small leaks are going in like carburetor what's going on i'm gonna do a little bit more research and i'm gonna see what's going on there but this thing kicked off it hasn't been driven in who knows how many years um and for me to sit here and not really know what i'm doing but after a day really just bought like three parts i think it cost me 60 bucks that thing just started driving again or running it's not driving yet but it will be um, that's awesome. I love to see it and to breathe life back into these old trucks is 
I mean, it's just something I can't get enough of. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see, I'm going to look into more information on that carb and that, I think that's going to do it for part two today until I can find some more information on that carburetor and see what's going on with that. But all right. Hey, it was good making another part for this video and it was uh, a fun time. I'm super excited to see what's going on with this thing. And, uh, I hope you guys like what's going on here and I'll see you guys in the next part or the next video, whichever comes first. Thank y'all so much.